Hello, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Hello, Internet. It's Big Dave here. Executive Big Dave. Hi, Overlord of the Frugal Mandate, and we are back with more Stellaris. So we've had an eventful first three episodes, and uh, if you're one of the six people that watched the last episode, then you will know that uh, our ships are here upgrading. Our colony is slowly but surely deploying itself. We will soon have our first off-world colony. We have a science ship that's hard at work. we got lots of things going on in the world of the Frugal Mandate. We have discovered... Uh, a rival mandate here, the Zack Plots, in uh, their space just to the sort of, uh, let's call it, cosmic north east of us here. Uh, we did expand ourselves. We expanded with a frontier outpost here, which allowed us to sort of uh, establish a, a firm border with the Zack Plots. We are going to be firm about our borders with the Zack Plots. Hopefully we'll be able to sort of hem them in here <laughs> and maybe just kind of trap them over here in, in this sort of uh, outskirts of the galaxy and, uh, you know, sort of force them into maybe just being our allies for all of eternity as we uh, trap them in this small segment of space and uh, just sort of allow them to have what we will allow them to have. That's that's how the true mandate works. It's none of this uh, Zack Plot stuff. Actually, these guys are, are quite a lot like us, and I think uh, we're actually kind of becoming fast friends, so I don't know that I have to worry about forcibly uh, forcing them into an alliance or anything. So, uh, yeah, Smithius here in the Foldara system is uh, slowly uh, deploying, again, the, uh, the colony ship turning itself into a capital building where uh, all the colonists can uh, can sort of get a good start, you know, start off on a new world and and hopefully uh, make, you know, a life of it. And our borders will expand down into sort of this region here. And we can consider putting another wormhole generator down here, which would expand our reach. Uh, if you're wondering about these guys, these little flashers, these are high value mining targets, right? Mineral rich planets. This was a result of us choosing not to destroy the ancient mining drones that we first encountered and instead uh, using their technology or listening in and learning exactly how it is that they discover mineral rich planets. So our uh, pacifist nature uh, here actually allowed us to, or I don't believe pacifism is one of our traits, but uh, because it wasn't profitable to destroy them, we listened in and that actually uh, led to profit as uh, as we are uh, always after the almighty dollar so we can squirrel it away and save it for a rainy day right so we may actually find ourselves expanding towards uh, some of these mineral rich systems in the near future and foldara could be a good jumping off point to hit uh, this one and potentially this one for sure so uh, what are we going to do in this episode we've 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 recapped we have colony we have ships upgrading we have a science ship that is uh, doing his business of surveying so what else can we do? We got a sleepy construction ship up here that we might want to check on. And we also have diplomacy that we haven't really engaged in at all uh, for the most part. We did greet our new neighbors, but we haven't really done a lot in the uh, actual active diplomacy department. So maybe we'll check that out to start with. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and unpause things and just get it moving. We'll first check on our construction ship. Let's see exactly what he's up to. He's well, he's up to nothing. We can tell. Uh, so let's see what could he reach. Yeah, we could we could do a little bit of expansion System here. Survey complete. Yeah, we've got a lot of uh, yeah a lot of good resources here. So let's uh, let's go ahead and send him this way, and we will go ahead and get him to build the mining stations that are necessary. Science ship just completed a survey, finding more planets. Uh, this would be uh, the research target for us here. And uh, oh, we do have a warning up here about our negative balance in energy credits. That will resolve itself as our colony finishes its process of, uh, of actually deploying. We're going to speed up to fast here because we like it fast. And we are going to check on diplomacy. All right, so there's the Frugal Mandate. That's us, of course, uh, the race of Chamberlains. And uh, here are the uh, Zack Plot mandates. So just to uh, to refresh ourselves, they're an indirect democ democracy. They're federation builders. They are fanatical, uh, fanatic individualists and pacifists. Uh, we are individualists and fanatic materialists. So uh, so yeah, these guys are pacifists. So maybe we can bend them to our will, as they will be accommodating to our requests for dominance, perhaps. Uh, but let's actually let's communicate with these guys. Let's let's see what they're all about. 
Uh, so we could declare war on them. You know, that's a, that's a thing you could do. Um, we do get some some helpful information here, what we know about these guys. Uh, they are equivalent in their power, as far as their fleet power is equivalent, their naval capacity is inqu equivalent, and their technology level is equivalent. Uh, they're wary of us, maybe, you know, one, uh, wondering about us. You are at a negative 24 right now uh, because we've just met, so that will slowly improve with time. And there is a little bit of border friction. The border friction actually comes from the fact that I have a uh, frontier outpost up here. Your neighbors don't like frontier outposts because it's a sort of a, it's an expansionist sort of behavior. Like you're, you're trying to take over all of space. I don't want to tell anybody. Listen, guys, keep this a secret, but I am trying to take over everything. So shh, don't tell the Zach plots. And now we have an event. It is the birth of space piracy. Parasitic elements always flock to new markets seeking to cut into profits and and the, uh, at the expense of those doing honest business. Honest business like the rest of the Frugal Mandate, right? Space has proven no different indeed. Several underground criminal organizations on Ricks have expanded their operations into space by converting a small fleet of civilian freighters into warships. These outlaws call themselves the Crimson Commando, and their ships have started menacing a civilian shipping lane. Hmm, we should act quickly indeed. The trade must flow, yes indeed. The trade must flow. So, democracy, democracy, diplomacy. There's no democracy here. <laughs> oh, democracy. Diplomacy must wait, as we now must take it into our own hands to secure our own borders, our own mandates before dealing with the mandates of others. So, let's see. Do we have intel on these space pirates? I'm going to assume that they could be here. So, let us deploy the fleet. First strike force, deploy. It's kind of kind of anti-climactic from this view, but there they go. Heading out to the wormhole. Look at them. I heard the unmistakable sound. Oh, there they are. Okay. So you stop what you're doing and you go this way. And so we are dealing with a force with a power of 83. They are attacking our mining station here. Uh, it's going to fight back a little bit, but it's not going to have a whole lot of... Come on, I said attack these guys, right? Um, well, I didn't say attack these guys. I said move, move, move. And there they go. Okay. They are set on passive, which I suppose is the reason that they didn't attack right away. But our 185 military strength should be more than enough to finish this battle up in short time. I can't tell these ships apart. I'm glad they can tell each other apart. Else we'd just be slowly destroying our own fleet. And the final pirate frigate goes down. There we go. Frugal Mandate has emerged victorious. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, we'll, we'll put the, the boot on the neck of space piracy for now. And we will send our ships back to repair. Uh, he will slowly repair himself over time. Doesn't really look like he took all that much damage anyhow. So I, I don't think that'll be the last of the Space Pirates, uh, but uh, we have certainly given them something to think about before they come back harassing our shipping lanes. All right, yeah, that flat 5% uh, research speed increase couldn't pass it up, and uh, now we have it. It is ours, so we need to look for a new physics research. What's it going to be? Colony development speed plus 25 has its pros and cons. Energy storage capacity plus 500, which is nice because we are back in the positive here. So if we do get towards our cap of 2750, then uh, that extra 500 can, uh, can do us a little bit uh, a little bit of a solid. And we can get the uh, power hub, which is a, a nice, uh, it's a power producing building that we can put on a planet that just gives us 10% uh, extra energy credits So uh, on that planet. So uh, that's pretty nice. And it does cost a little bit of influence to use that purple uh, currency there in the middle of the three costs and uh, that actually can be nice because there are points where you will potentially find yourself with an abundance of that if you're not running too many uh, frontier outposts that is and uh, it could be a nice dump to have these buildings uh, and it always it is always nice to have a nice dump right yeah yeah i walked into that one uh, planet fortification tech toughness plus 20 percent and improved deflectors by getting improved deflectors improved deflect deflectors would be nice i think for now though uh, let's go into. See, he actually is an expert in the field manipulation 
segment of the research sciences. So he would actually give us an additional 10%, which means he would finish this at a pretty good rate. Hmm. Ah, oh, come on now. This was simple until I made it difficult. Uh, yeah, let's do it. So yeah, as you can see, because he gets that extra 10% bonus, he is going to finish this uh, faster than he would otherwise. So that's uh, that's very nice. Other research is coming along nicely, exactly what we want to see. And we are going to... Everybody's busy. Yes, we are going to check on our colony first. Smithius what have you here. Okay, so we right now are producing two food, and we have a population of one. We haven't assigned a governor yet. We could do that if we want. So uh, right now, we got a pretty good-looking space here. Uh, we've got some, some energy-producing tiles. We've got uh, mine uh, minerals and a little bit of uh, research, a little bit of the... Uh, no, food. Excuse me. Food. Social research is green, but it is the planet green. So yeah, food. So we've got... Uh, we're going to have an abundance of food basically here. Uh, right now, what we really need is for uh, some more pop to pop in, and that hasn't happened yet, so uh, this has only been a colony for, you know, well, I guess space-time, it's been about a month, but uh, it hasn't been a colony for all that long, so why don't we go ahead and assign a governor? Uh, now, there there is Gov Ray. Uh, we all know and love Gov Ray for his, uh, his various uh, contributions to society on Ricks, uh, but we're going to need a new governor. Who is going to uh, who is going to to soldier forth here and govern our new Smithius settlement? Let's see here. So we've got uh, eager. So that person is just thirty three percent less costly to recruit because they're eager to get into government. Yay! This guy is uh, going to get extra leader experience, which means that over time he will pan out to be a better leader uh, than some of these other guys because he's going to level up faster. Uh, this guy is a workhorse. Governor Dick. Governor Dick is going to give us just flat 10% on everything here. Engineering, physics, and society. Hmm. I'm not short on influence, so I could definitely afford either one of these two guys. He is the youngest. You know, before I do this, let me take a quick look at the potential for this planet. Mining, mining food, mining, research... Okay, so naturally this planet is not inclined towards research. So that means I would have to populate a lot of these blank spaces or even uh, populate some of these minerals with research instead. So if, you know, if I put something here that isn't uh, going to harvest this mineral, then that mineral just goes to waste. So if I wanted to really take advantage of the dick, then I would need to uh, have a, a, a more research-rich planet, a less mineral and energy-rich planet. So... Uh, yeah, I, I think um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go with uh, I'm gonna have to go with Zai here. So it's gonna be Zai Z Zia Zia. I like Zia. I'm gonna say Zia. All right. So you are available to govern, and uh, you have been uh, elected to govern. Uh, elected on my whim, I suppose. And uh, there we go. We have a governor, and that governor is going to start accruing. Uh, accruing experience and is also going to be uh, giving off these these nice little bonuses just nice little bonuses as this governor levels up these bonuses will increase it is lovely it is nice and we are going to slowly watch this planet start to develop and our empire will grow all right back to diplomacy all right zach plots what have you so we could declare war we could do any of this alliance stuff that our 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 uh, relations are not high enough. Their opinion of us is not high enough for any of that. Uh, a good thing to do right off the bat, if they'll allow it, is just establish uh, establish a, a, an embassy. So our first strike force is repaired. We're going to establish our embassy. Yes, improve relations with the Frugal Mandate uh, could suit our purposes, indeed. So we're now going to just increase our relationship with them at a faster rate. And uh, that is a... Uh, that is a nice thing to do right off the bat. And uh, something that I also like to try to do if I can with, with new uh, neighbors is uh, share star maps. So I'm going to offer them, you can see Frugal Mandate gives, I'm going to offer them my star charts. And so far, they're amenable to this. In order for this trade to go through, they need uh, this needs to be a one. And so right now, uh, they, are, they are valuing my star charts at a two. And you can see it goes to zero because they have this trade willingness, right? So their willingness to trade is, is a base of 95% because they're federation builders. So 
uh, basically they, they're they're willing to enter a trade deal with us uh, effectively uh, highly so they don't value our trade offer nearly at 100 percent. so if they valued it at 100 percent, maybe these things would trade one for one but they don't value that so uh, active sensor System link survey. doesn't help so i'm having trouble getting these guys to kind of uh, come on board with me oh if i now if i give them 15 years of 14 15 years of active sensor link then they want to all of a sudden they want to trade star charts I don't guess that these guys have really been all that many places. So I'm just going to hold off for now. I'm going to hold off for now. Pretty soon my star charts are going to be pretty darn valuable as I begin to expand. So we'll revisit that. And our relationship will also continue to improve. So uh, that'll definitely add into the, uh, to the benefits of trade. What do we have now? What do we have going on? Diplomacy done. Let's uh, take our construction ship, do a check here. He is busily building away. He is nearly done here. And when he finishes, I want to start... Yes, indeed, I want to start expanding. Oh, we found another colonizable planet. Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. All right, science ship. Oh, let's see. Take a look at the map. Okay, so I want to build a new wormhole generator so that I can jump farther. You know, right now, this is sort of my jump distance. This dotted orange yellow line here is the uh, extent to which I can jump. Uh, this leads over to the edge of the galaxy, which I guess is a, is a thing that happens. Galaxies have edges, right? This is probably the direction I want to go. So in order to get my borders, uh, my, my wormhole uh, expansion border, a uh, wormhole jump border to extend down this way, I think I'm going to look at Kaz as a potential spot. So let's bring our construction ship here. And while we're waiting on our construction ship, let's give our science ship a little more work to do. Uh, so right now these do fall within my jump range. So he is going to survey both of these systems. Uh, there was an alien craft there for, for for a second. I was just trying to figure out who's who's flying around in my space. Probably just the uh, grazers or some other harmless organic. They better be harmless. Crossing my fingers that they're harmless. Uh, so it looks like we lost a ship in that battle. Looks like we may have. Goodness, okay. Well, that's too bad. Uh, why don't we go ahead and actually just uh, replace that ship. That's a spaceport. That's what we want right there. Uh, so let's go ahead and build ourselves a, yep, a Corvette, an Aero Class Corvette. Uh, and that should replace the ship that we lost, and all will be good. So our construction ship is hard at work. Our science ship is hard at work. We have spoken with the Zakplots, and uh, they are not eager to trade with us, which is okay right now. I don't expect them to uh, to necessarily be ready for that yet. We, we both have only just ventured into space, and we are both starting our expansions. So, you know, they have better things to, to worry about. Hostile fleet. Okay, so our science ship. Wait, where are we? Okay, we're here. Okay, so we've got... Okay, so we've got the space amoebas just kind of dipping into our northern territories here. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about the space amoebas. All right, our construction ship has built... Or has arrived, excuse me, and now he will build the wormhole station. So the wormhole station, the only real thing about the wormhole station is that you need to be outside of the gravity well of the star. So uh, this dotted line, white dotted line, represents the gravity well of this star, and we just need to make sure that we're outside of that when we build our wormhole station. Uh, and that's why I sent this ship out to the uh, sort of outskirts of the system. And so uh, that is what he's going to do right now. Yeah, he is going to build that. That'll do. And let's put that in motion. A friendly reminder that my research did finish and I wasn't paying attention. All right, gal, what do you have here? What do you have here? Uh, we have uh, tile blockers. Uh, removing a tile blocker in the form of a sinkhole. 
could be useful. We have the bio lab, which will convert our basic research facility into a plus two in the society research department. And we have a centralized command, army upkeep minus 10%. That could be nice when we uh, raise a much larger army. And the military academy, which increases the build speed of armies. Mm. Nothing here is particularly interesting. Mm, we have ourselves an anomaly. Let's pause for a moment to examine it. All right, Paseca found an anomaly. 5% uh, failure risk. I think that is worth it. 5%. I mean, that's, that's a tiny risk and we really don't have anybody else yeah so yeah can't really change scientists anyway all right so uh, uh go for it my friend go forth and research well so before we uh, set this research in motion i do want to take a check on our planets here so uh, i don't want to uh pick the sinkhole right now if there's not actually a benefit to that and there are no sinkholes on rick's uh, we have one, two sinkholes here on Smithius. So there is some value to that. Uh, we will continue to to settle arid worlds, which will have sinkholes as one of their possible uh, one of their possible terrain blockers. So it is also reason well no, I was gonna say it's reasonably priced. No, I was looking at this one. It's the most expensive of all. Great. Uh, you know, I, I think I just got to bite the bullet. This will free up two tiles on Smithius. We don't need that now, but we will need that eventually. So let's do it. Set that research in motion. And on that note, I think it's time to pause. I will rejoin you guys in the next video. We are continuing to expand the, the Frugal Mandate, dealing with our neighbors, the Zack Plots, dealing with expansion. When we come back in the next episode, we will build a new wormhole generator, which will open a vast new segment of space to us, and we will continue to explore and expand in the name of reasonable prices. Of course, as always, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.